Back in 2015, if you were looking to build a budget gaming PC, an AMD FM2 Plus platform could have been on your shopping list. But for what you saved in money, you almost certainly lost in gaming performance because FM2 Plus was never the most powerful platform for CPUs. But if you bought one of these back then, how would it be performing now? If that's you, or if you're just curious, don't worry because I've been doing some benchmarks to find out how well this system gets on and let me tell you now, it's, it's not very good. Before I get into the video, I want to set this straight. Under no circumstances do I recommend going out and buying an FM2 Plus system to play games in 2023. It's simply not worth it, especially as Intel has well systems, which are a lot more powerful than this, go for around the same price. So if you're looking for a very budget gaming PC, I don't recommend this. Speaking of which, this is the hardware setup that I've got today. Andy's Tech just had a load of FM2 Plus motherboards lying around for some reason and he asked if I wanted one so I was like, yeah I'll take it, I could get some content out of it. So a big shout out to him, he makes a lot of PC content as well on YouTube so make sure you check him out. However, these are the specs that I've got. At the heart of the system is the A8 7650K and it's a quad core CPU or it's technically an APU actually as it has R7 Radeon graphics. And it was basic in 2015 and in 2023 it's kind of, uh, yeah you kind of get the point, it's, it's not very good in 2023 as we're about to find out. But it does have an unlocked multiplier though, so that's got to count for something, right? The motherboard model is a Gigabyte Ultra Durable and it's a no bells or whistles motherboard as a lot of FM2 motherboards are. And its best feature is USB 3, which is kind of nice to see, I suppose. But other than that, it's just a board you put into a system and it will work. But that's what a lot of these people were looking for, it's budget. And then the most expensive part in this system is the 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, which is running in dual channel, which is very nice I suppose. So to see how well or poorly this FM2 Plus system gets on in 2023, I've tested it at 1080p using the RX Vega 56 which should allow this old CPU to stretch its legs. For comparisons I've compared the results to a modern i5 12400F just to see how much performance you would be losing on an older platform like this. All games are loaded on a crucial BX500 one terabyte SATA SSD, so it's as apples to apples as possible. The first game up in the benchmarking list today is Fortnite, setting it to the performance API with everything else set to low to give this APU a fighting chance. And uh, yeah, it didn't perform too great. That is because on average you got 70 frames per second, but the 1% low was absolutely awful, getting just 9%. If we compare this to the modern i5 12400F, we see a massive 256% increase with the average frame rate, going up to 249 FPS, and the 1% low also increased by 80 frames per second, going up to 89. So yes, this old AMD FM2 Plus CPU isn't really cutting it in Fortnite. GTA 5 tells a very similar story, setting it to the high preset with two times MSAA, but I put the population density and variety sliders on half. This helps out the CPU a bit. Even though 34 FPS on average with 25 FPS for the 1% low isn't particularly great performance, considering GTA 5 launched in the same year this CPU was released, so yeah if you were to have a bit more of a modern processor you should expect around a 320 percent performance uplift as the i5 12400f got 145 frames per second on average and the one percent low was way better going up to 118. so is this fm2 plus cpu playable in gta 5 yes is it the best no to no one's surprise today, Cyberpunk 2077 is the worst performing game. Setting it to the low preset here with high textures as the 8GB of VRAM on the Vega 56 is enough for that. This netted an average frame rate of 27 FPS and a 1% low of 15 frames per second. This isn't really a playable experience in my opinion, so this EPU isn't cutting it in Cyberpunk, but to be fair, this is what I was expecting. The modern i5 allows the Vega 56 to perform at its absolute potential, going up to 57 FPS on average with a 1% low of 43. So this is how much performance you are losing if you've got an FM2 Plus CPU like this. 
From my previous testing, Counter-Strike 2 is actually one of the more CPU bound titles I've ever tested and that stays true today. Setting it to the low preset but disabling FSR is we don't want that enabled today. The 7650K got 36 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 23, which isn't really playable in Counter-Strike 2 in my opinion. You want around at least 120 frames as it is a competitive shooter. However though, switching up to a modern CPU like the i5-12400F sees a massive increase of 453%. That is because this got 199 FPS on average with a 1% low of 88 frames per second. So that's way better performance in my opinion. I know which CPU I would take here. God of War is up next and here I set it to the high preset and from my previous testing it did seem pretty CPU intensive and to be fair that does stay true today because the 7650K got 37 FPS on average and a 1% low of 20 FPS, which is, I mean, it's playable, but it isn't particularly great, especially when you consider the performance you're losing because the i5-12400F got 83 FPS on average and a 1% low of 72 frames per second. So it's running nice and smooth on the modern system, but to be fair, this is what I expected. And the 7650K does run God of War, but it isn't particularly the smoothest experience, but hats off to it, it did run it. The last game up is Rainbow Six Siege and this was the best performer today, setting it to the medium preset here and this netted 96 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 57 FPS. So if you wanted a very budget esports machine, I mean this FM2 CPU is pretty playable I guess. However, you are leaving a lot of performance on the table as the 12400F got 285 frames per second on average and the 1% low was also much higher at 198 fps so yes you are losing a lot of performance even with the same gpu so after all that benchmarking the data basically confirms what i was thinking anyways and that is this fm2 plus cpu or apu depending on how you look at it basically doesn't have any compute power to play any game to be fair. The only game which was virtually playable was Rainbow Six Siege and even then the FM2 Plus CPU was losing a whole heap of performance compared to the modern i5. Looking at the rest of the games tested and this is where it gets even worse. A prime example of this is GTA 5. The PC port of this game came out in the same year as this APU and the performance was absolutely horrid. It didn't even break 60 frames per second on average which I think is not very good especially in a CPU which launched in the same year as the PC port. Also the Vega 56 was basically doing nothing with about 50% utilisation in GTA 5 as the CPU was just pegged at 100% so yeah that resulted in a bunch of gaming performance lost. And this trend continues to all of the other games tested today. It's basically the Vega 56 is being heavily bottlenecked by the CPU. Despite the poor performance from the CPU tested today, it is kind of cool to see how far CPU performance has come. This is because a single core from my i5 is more powerful than all four cores or dual cores depending on how you look at it of this APU, which I think is actually a pretty incredible feat. And don't forget the i5-12400F has six cores and 12 threads, whereas this is, depending on who you ask, a two core four thread or a four core four thread. AMD were kind of a bit sketchy with their core counts back then. So it's clear that FM2 Plus isn't a viable gaming platform in 2023, at least with the 7650K CPU I've used today. However, the Intel Haswell CPUs, which released the year before this, are way more powerful and you can find them for around the same price. This is why I'd recommend getting an i7 or an 8-threaded Xeon from this era. They do pair quite well with the Vega 56, which I use today. And if you want to see how an 8-threaded Xeon performs on the Haswell architecture, you can watch that video right up there. So if you were to build a budget gaming PC in 2023, and I mean a very budget gaming PC, Haswell is where you should be looking. Totally avoid FM2, it's just simply not worth it. I, I don't see why anyone would use this platform unless if they were given it for free. I highly recommend looking into a Haswell system over this just because Haswell does have better support for technologies like AVX2 and the single core performance is way better than this. Right then, the moral of the story is don't buy anything pre-AM4. Back then AMD were just 
they weren't really a serious company CPU wise. So that's my recommendation. If you're looking for something very cheap, go Intel Haswell. So that brings me on to the end of the video. If you want to see more FM2 plus testing or just all the CPU testing in general, make sure you comment that down below because I want to see what you lot think. With that being said, I'm going to leave this video here. There are two other tech videos right up here, which might be right up your alley. And if you got this far into the video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around this long. And if you really like the video, consider leaving the video a like. It does really help out with the channel. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one and have a good rest of your day.